Okay, so it's been quite a while now and um, just kind of was inspired. Had to do some uh, PDA, so some agar for some petri dishes and I uh, thought it's a pretty quick process. Maybe I should just share it with you guys quick. So um, kind of in the middle of that right now and then uh, I'm going to kind of share you know, what I've been doing. So just hold on a second. All right, so just kind of getting started here. So I'm actually going through the process of starting some uh, PDA um, or as others call it, uh, potato dextrose agar. Um, so there's three ingredients that kind of go into uh, the agar that you're making for your petri dishes. Um, so one of the first ingredients, potatoes, um, you end up kind of measuring those out. And I'll go through the recipe quick here, but I just want to kind of give you an overview. Um, and then you're also using um, a bit of agar, which is really nutrient rich and helps kind of solidify or make kind of a gel out of this. And then uh, dextrose, which is uh, some of the sugars um, that the mycelium will take in as part of that whole nutrient base. So. Um, so essentially what I have here, um, starting with the recipe, you have uh, 10 ounces of potatoes or 284 grams. Um, so I use a digital postal scale, which works wonders um, for all kinds. We use it for harvesting, uh, use it for quite a bit. Um, and then also doing the, the agar stuff. So I have some potatoes in here that's boiled in a regular sauce pot. Um, that's about what uh, 10 ounces looks like. So a little under a pound, about two thirds of a pound. Uh, and then you just boil that in a pint of water and you um, eventually strain it out. So I have that strained here in um, just a stainless steel kitchen bowl. And you know, it is a little cloudy in there. So some of the, the uh, starch solids from the uh, potato breaking down are in there and that's fine. You know, you're, again, this is for mycelium to grow on. So we're not going for perfection here and having a little bit of that, um, those starch solids and there's not, a, not an issue at all. Um, I was already kind of ahead of myself um, when I decided to try to do the video. Um, I had already measured out um, in this uh, Erlenmeyer flask um, some uh, agar and uh, the dextrose. So the amount of agar, I'm using about 18 grams of agar um, that, that are in there and then about 8 grams of dextrose. So that's already measured out in here. And then really the next step is I just need to go ahead and um, mix this all together and uh, get this liquid in there. I will do that, but I'm gonna grab a funnel first since I seem to be missing that. Okay, so I'm back. I got my little funnel here, and so I'm just gonna use this guy to uh, go ahead and get this liquid in there. So I'll pour it slowly. So really all we're going for is just get this liquid in here. We wanna get mixed up, and then uh, we wanna pressure cook the hell out of it. Um, go ahead and sterilize it, and then uh, make sure that we're killing everything in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it into these Petri dishes. So I have about eight here, um, which, um, you know, for this amount, it's a little, you know, about a pint of liquid. Uh, you can definitely do those eight and you can probably do closer to 10. And trust me when I say that having this many Petri dishes is more than you could possibly need. I mean, you could easily, if you were doing this once a week, or I guess if you had, if you had so many of these, or even every, you know, once a month if you were doing this, um, with the number of petri dishes, you could produce enough green spawn. I'm sure to do a ton of mushrooms a week, literally. Um, there's sort of like this exponential growth, and if you've seen any of like Paul Stamets' books or you know talking about um, uh, kind of like doing grain to grain transfers, those types of things, where you're starting from petri dishes, you're going ahead and inoculating um, from there some smaller jars of grain, and then those jars of grain can then inoculate more grain so it really becomes exponential in a lot of ways and so you can produce as much grain spawn as you can possibly use and you could do that like i said if you were doing eight to ten uh, petries most of the time i end up wasting some what's nice is that if you do a large number of these that you can uh, look for contamination you know you know might get a spot of green mold or whatever it is you pitch that petri right away but then you know you're, you're relying on the rest that you're going to get a couple good really good healthy strong cultures out of so so that's important. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm going to wrap these guys in tin foil because we're gonna pressure cook and sterilize these um, just using a regular um, full size, uh, I don't know how many that is, maybe an eight or 10 quart, something along those lines. Um, and then we'll, we'll sterilize in that. So um, this is pretty much ready to go, mixed up, kind of mix a little bit more, it'll cook. We'll, we'll pressure cook all of this and then once we take it out, then we'll actually pour and then be good to go. And then uh, I'll probably show you that point at which I do some pouring because I also have some spore prints in there. I can show you how easy it is to do spore prints. Um, it doesn't take a lot of uh, science to do that either. So I'll share that with you in probably about an hour or two. 
All right, so uh, we finally uh, spent about an hour and actually did a little, uh, oh, I don't know, I guess uh, autoclaving or sterilizing, whatever you want to call it. Um, so the pressure cooker's down, I have a Petri's in here and then also my agar. Um, and you'll notice that once I pull the agar out, it'll be kind of liquid. Now what I want to show you here quick is uh, just some floor prints that I'm working on. So I use some glass slides, I use some, uh, uh, what am I thinking now? Kind of like cloth tape that you can actually take two plates. Uh, I think they're about five by inch, or five inch by five inch uh, glass plates, and they're just kind of uh, taped together. And then you can fold those up after you um, do your spore prints on them. So I like using those, and that uh, works out pretty slick. So um, about once a month or so, uh, I try to do this, and then I can you can keep them in the fridge or freezer and uh, store spore prints that way. Or these will be fresh spore prints. So tomorrow morning, once the agar cools. Um, I'll be able to take uh, some of the scrapings off of this and uh, be able to make some more mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a little bit.
so much quicker and so much faster. And you can also do spore prints. You can take these guys and blend them up, um, which I think I've shown in another video or two or described that method where once these uh, petri are myceliated, uh, you take that and you can use uh, certain types of uh, lab blenders in order to mix that up or even um, just kind of making a slurry on the top and then making uh, syringes that way. Um, but for the most part, it's a lot of extra goofing around. I like this where I just do this and then direct Grain or uh, direct uh, transfer to grain and uh, works out really well. This is probably the longest step where you know this might take a couple weeks where using uh, syringes is pretty quick, but uh, as long as you're giving yourself uh, plenty of uh, lead time and still working from your other, uh, other spawn stocks, then you're, uh, you're pretty good. So, the ultimate goal, which I can show you quick too, on Go ahead and creating uh, some uh, green spawn. So this is some green to green that we had done the other day, and uh, this is about four. I don't have this one marked right now, but this is essentially about four to five days, and it's just about 100% myceliated. This is a little bit down here that isn't. So green to green transfers are so so fast. So very vigorous. Um, you know, but once we put spores on here, you'll start to see probably some uh, uh, some of the chains start to get created, and maybe in a few weeks, probably two to three weeks, and these will be ready to go into grain. And then from there, then probably another week, maybe two weeks. Uh, so you're looking at maybe uh, four to five weeks um, before then you can take that grain to grain and end up with something like this. And then, uh, that's a beautiful, healthy uh, grain spawn. So, hope you enjoyed that, and. Uh, Kind of keep them coming. Thanks. All right, so we're back again. It's been about 24 hours later. Um, I poured agar last night, and so it's sort of sitting here. Um, so now I'm going to transfer uh, one of these spore prints that we did um, and get those into the petri dishes so we can make some um, petries. That's my ceiling going. So I uh, got my little alcohol burner here. So this I just kind of whipped together. I got a jar from uh, our baby food. Uh, a little piece of cotton so you can make these yourself uh, works out pretty slick so and then i'm just using alcohol and any 91 percent isopropyl that i get from walmart so great for sterilizing also great for uh firing up your own uh, homemade alcohol burner so works pretty good so just put a little bit in there because you're not burning for very long and then um and it's kind of give it a little shake and then it goes ahead and what's your burner so there you go, then you get a flame. There's a little bit of this. I'm going to uh, sterilize my hands. I'm always pretty liberal. I suppose I could uh, start my hands on fire and all. Okay. So, my guess is I'll uh, go ahead and sterilize my inoculation loop. 
And then about the time I do that, I'm going to go ahead and um, turn on the airflow hood here. This is going to glow red hot and then sterilize the whole end of the inoculation loop. I don't want to turn on my flow hood quite yet because it'll probably blow up my flame. Alright, so I'll get a good chunk of that glowing red hot. So, Alright, I think we're good. Totally out, but feel pretty confident we're sterile enough over these guys. So there's definitely condensation that's in there as a result of uh, pouring the agar, a lot of that moisture evaporating off there. So again, what we're going for is uh, we don't need all of these to be perfect. Um, but we want to have a couple that are uh, as healthy as possible. So we'll most likely end up with a couple of these that'll end up getting contaminated. Go ahead and start here. It can't hurt to kind of diversify, so we have a uh, pretty good spore print here. These mushrooms we can go ahead and just toss. Uh, here's kind of a beautiful spore print. I think you can see that on there. Um, so I'll probably end up using this one, and then I'll use the other one. I think it just makes sense to go ahead and do that. So I'm going to actually use some of the condensation. Pick up some of these spores. And it really isn't going to take much. So I'm going to go ahead and wet that. This is all we're really going for. pattern, you can do whatever you want. Be artistic, draw your face or a smiley. See if that actually turns out. Can't hurt. More spores in there, the better, huh? Alright, so that's the spore print I used. Um, of course, I didn't follow my own advice and separate it out, but I am going to go grab one from the freezer because I want to save a couple and I'm kind of doing my own testing with verifying, uh, freezing uh, the glass slides and finding out if that works okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause and then go get one of those and bring that out here. So I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I just got my other one. This is in the freezer and I'm pretty sure I shouldn't have any issues there. Um, but it's something that they got thrown in a little mini fridge freezer. We use a mini fridge for keeping uh, all this stuff in so all my green spawn once it gets good to go, then I put it in the cooler to slow it down, otherwise it'll uh, just keep on going when it's at that room temperature. So There's also a little freezer in there, which we ended up putting in there by accident, the spore slide. So I just want to make sure they work out. Like I said, just some testing I'm doing my own. So these guys are done. We're going to go ahead and lay these in a minute. Uh, I probably need to fire up my alcohol burner again, just so I'm not cross-contaminating.
most of that condensation at some point will slowly evaporate out of there around the edges and then that be gone. Um, I did introduce some water into these slides, but I don't get too concerned with it because they're pretty large prints. And again, you know, if in the long run we're contaminating a couple of these, I'm not really that concerned because we have enough of them. And like I said, any one of these, you know, all I need is one petri dish to be able to uh, keep going each month. And again, it's back to where you're going to get the real volume out of your grain. Um, grain spawn is when you're doing grain to grain transfers. So I just want to do this to get a nice, healthy new batch. Uh oh, I'm got a little fire running. Um, and just kind of keep it going. So I try to do this about once a month right now. So that's pretty much it. So that was kind of the entire process. Um, going from PDA to here where we're inoculating. And um, now I'm just going to use some uh, cloth uh, medical tape or whatever it is. And then I'm going to I just put the variety, uh, put Corotus pulmonarius on here, and then I'm going to put the date. And then I'm going to stick these on the shelf and uh, watch them every couple days see what uh, what kind of comes out of them. If I see any contamination, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that right away. So let's go ahead and put a little on this on there and go ahead and finish up. So uh, please feel free to post comments. Uh, I think I've seen a couple people do that so far and uh, been happy about that. So I'll go ahead and uh, try to respond to you guys and uh, give you feedback. And, uh, hopefully before too long, I think we're getting ready to kind of expand the facility uh, and hopefully uh, really start ramping this up and kind of show you uh, maybe what it's like uh, for our new building that we might be moving into. So hopefully more to come there. That's pretty exciting for us. So I uh, definitely appreciate you uh, watching. Thanks.